and down the street of Jerusalem, look around and consider, search through a squares. If he can find one man, one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this person. So God is looking for a faithful vessel. God is looking for a faithful vessel to be loyal, to be trustworthy, to be diligent, faithfully possess. God is looking for a man that faithfully possesses their vessel in order to remain for the master's use. Faithfully seeking the truth, to be diligent, to diligently sit. One who is diligent and sitting at the Father, at the feet of the Father to hear from the Father. God. It means that you can't be loyal to the gospel of God and be loyal to perfection. So you can, that's, that's faithfulness. You can't be, you can't be faithful to both. Give yourself, your vessel, the best chance to be used by God. That means you may need to cut down on certain things that may affect your delivery, you know, that affect your, your service in the vineyard of God. So how are you possessing your vessel? God wants you, for you to be, your vessel already, right? But to be fit for the master's use, you must possess your vessel. That's yourself, Lord. So I thought, you know, this is a scripture where one man got a commendation that you're a faithful servant, you know, that you're a faithful servant. And we are wondering what qualifies this man to be faithful. And we saw it was because what God committed into his hand, he made more of it, right? So how much more? Are you faithfully making more of what God has committed into your hands? In the work of God, evangelism, how many souls are you standing at your duty post to keep in the vineyard of God, in the, you know, in the courts of the Father, because you are faithfully, you know, Faithfully leading us in worship. You know, how much, how much, because you see, when, when we talk about faithfulness, it is also that I don't put myself in a place that, that's what I said before, that I cannot be a conduit for the raw word of God. Do you know what? I, Godless chatter, whatever you are doing, that is likely to reduce the potency of God, what would do with, with you. Stop doing it because that has been unfaithful. You know, if God were to be here and he said that to us, you say, ah, but there are many of us in church. He can send all of us now. But say, I'm looking at your heart. I'm not looking at your presence. Say, but we are here. How can you say you can't send anybody? Say, because your heart is that I'm seeing. It is not a heart that can be sent. Because how would God say this? See how many people that go to church? How can God say I cannot find anybody? Seeing how many people that are in church? It's because that heart, this one, your hands are soiled. Teach, you can take that as a cue. The deception of availability. That because we all see each other, people always, you know, one, the proof of faithfulness is that you're available. You must be available to be faithful. You can't say I'm faithful, but every time they can't see you. We need someone, they can't find you, they, you know, they can't find you to, you know, in the, in the vineyard of God. So you must be available. But now the deception, the, the challenge of availability is that you can, that can be the barest minimum you offer. And when this was in my spirit, the scripture I was, I was cutting for a scripture. And the one the Holy Ghost dropped with, in my heart within one minute was Ananias and Sapphira. Immediately the spirit of God put that scripture in my heart. I thought they must have thought at least we brought something. At all, at all, now I'm bad. And that is what most Christians do. Say, at all, at all. It doesn't matter the form with which you go. At all, at all. I showed up. They shall not see me. Pastor will not say, you did not see my tight when he's looking at the account. They will not say, they did not see me on Sunday. But God's, God knows you are only giving, you are only being available. You are not faithful. So don't fall into the deception of availability. That it is the barest minimum. Because that's what gave them the confidence to say, at least when the other people are bringing their money, they will say that the family of their Ananias, we brought our home. It is what gave them the courage, the boldness to lie that at least we brought something. It's because they wanted to be seen. To just, at least we were, our money was available. Whether we do it faithfully or not, at least our money was what? Don't just be available. Don't bring the bearers. Because you know I say that because of, Pastor is a lovely man, right? So he likes to recognize us and appreciate us and I love it. But the deception is that because you are being appreciated for coming to church or being recognized for serving, it may tempt you to think that is all that needs to be done. You don't need to go push further. It may tempt you to think that at least, you know, pastor, I like that. No media, they're always there. Even though that guy has not read the Bible this week, 